Hi. This week I've been sharing the findings in this study from Atlassian, the state of teams. And Atlassian looked at what creates a healthy team. And 17%, only 17% of the teams in the study were defined as healthy. 83% are not. They also said there's five threads that healthy teams have, none of which should be a surprise. Yet there's 83% of teams not having a shared understanding of the team purpose and goals, are not adaptive, do not celebrate failure as well as success, and do not provide opportunities to reflect in a blame-free environment. None of those things are new, but 83% of the teams in this study are not doing them. So this week I'm exploring not how you do them, but why you're not doing them, or why these teams are, are just ignoring what people have been writing about and talking about for ages. So this is about psychological safety, about teams being able to reflect what went well, what didn't work. People being able to share mistakes, setbacks, uh, challenge decisions, come up with new ideas, whatever, ask questions without any fear of reprisal, reprisal or repercussion. They know that their voice is valued and there is respect across the team to hear what people have to say and without filter or bias or judgment. So why doesn't that exist? Well, I think in often, lot in, often in organisations, there's still that hierarchy where the leader thinks that they are um, in that position of authority and that their word is it and they don't want to be challenged. They don't want people to speak up. Um, and unfortunately, yes, that still exists. Um, they don't embrace the input of the team um, and they don't welcome candour and um, feedback, if you like, on where the team's going. And the other thing about psychological safety is that it's not something you can buy. It's not a tool. It's not a platform. It's not a system. And you know, you can't really hold it. You can feel it, but you can't hold it. So it's not tangible and it takes a long time to build. But that's not a reason not to do it. I'm not going to talk about the benefits. There's, there's loads of advice on the benefits of psychological safe teams or psychological safety in teams. And it starts with trust. And trust, as we know, takes a long time, can take a long time to build and moments to destroy. So it's fragile, but again, it's not a reason to do it. You've got to work with trust and respect to build psychological safety. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye.